Ladies and gentlemen, you're all very welcome here this evening as we celebrate a fantastic year for Monaghan GAA and what a year it has been. Our hurlers, Peter Trainer and Trevor Hilliard, won two hurling all-stars on the Nicky Rackard Cup Champions 15 team. And our ladies' senior and minor teams did extremely well this year with our senior team winning their fourth Ulster title and narrowly losing the All-Ireland final. Huge congratulations to Gran McNally, Sharon Courtney, Cora Courtney and Kiva Mohan, who won All-Star awards last weekend. We've also had a very successful year at SCORE, winning two All-Ireland awards at SCORE and Anogue, with Colm Kirk from the Clonus Club winning with his recitation the Cross-Side Monaghan Hurler, and the Dumhawen Club winning the Keol Earlisha competition. Kogarja slow, and we salute their fantastic achievements. We will be celebrating these achievements at our GEA Awards Night on January the 18th, 2014, here in the Hillgrove Hotel, a date for your diary and one that we all look forward to. However, tonight we honour three teams who reached the holy grail of winning an Ulster football title. We honour the players who won an Ulster senior title in 1988, and little did we think it would take 25 years before we would win another title. This year, the county saw its first minor and senior double as our minor team won the Ulster League earlier on this year and then went on in the championship to beat Tyrone in a dramatic final for the first time since 1945. Our senior team beat the Ulster and All-Ireland champions Donegal to take home the anglo Cell Cup. And let's not forget that the senior team won a league title earlier this year. And some weeks ago, both Colin Walsh and Conor McManus won a GAA GPA All-Star Award. So as I said, it's been a fantastic year and one we look forward to reminiscing and celebrating later on this evening. We extend a special welcome to Jacintha Nangle and her colleagues from Investec who generously sponsor our county teams. Uchtaran Quarley Aldo Martin Mackey, Cass Buckley and McDig, Falter Oiv, Alig, and Shaw and Ut. Now, if some apologies from some guests that can't make it this evening, um, apologies from the 1988 team: Nudie Cues, PJ Finley, and Kieran Murray can't be heard, can't be here, I should say. And I've, I've been told reliably that Kieran Murray can't be here because he wants to keep his job with Roy Keane. So. Maybe we understand that one. So they, unfortunately, they can't be here tonight. Creepy No Kale on TD can't be here either, as is Danny Murphy, Secretary of the Ulster Council. Without further ado, Martian, or do squire a current also with Kai here, look, the Kundamwinahan, Paul Curran, to say a few words. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Bishop Liam McDade, Chairman of the Ulster Council, Martin McAvinney, and Jacinta Nangle of Investec, our country team sponsors. Um, you're all very welcome here tonight. A night in that we remember, and obviously a very special night where we celebrate our most successful year ever, when our senior team obviously gained promotion, won the anglo Cell Cup, our minors won the minor league, and championship double for the first time in 68 years. And as Gronia said, to continue last week with Colin, 
and Connor winning all star awards. So I think they all deserve a big round of applause. Um, as chairman, this will be my last and therefore my only opportunity to publicly congratulate our senior footballers and to thank them for players who have dedicated their entire county career in pursuit of an Ulster Champion medal. It was long overdue and I'm delighted to finally achieve their goal. Um, I'd like to thank the management team of Maliki, Leo, Ryan and Finmar and all the backroom team for their dedication, professionalism and commitment to finally reaching this goal. And if I could specifically thank Maliki. Um, when Maliki was announced as our manager, I obviously get to speak with the chairman from other counties on a regular basis. The three counties where he worked before, Calvin from Annandere, they all said the same thing, that he was a good one, a very good one, and particularly that he was a gentleman. And I would like to concur. Um, in the last year, I haven't received 10 phone calls from Maliki Rook. Six or seven of them were clarifications on procedure or policy. Two or three of them were demands that, or requests that weren't extreme and that were qualified by, if you have a problem with the poll or the clubs or the county committee, then don't worry about it. We're all right. I want to take this opportunity to thank Maliki for the respect that he has shown me, the other members of the county board, our clubs and our county committee and for what he's done for the GA in this county. Thank you, Maliki. And to our minor team, obviously it was a magnificent year, particularly gratifying. To the management team of Frank Brady, Mick O'Dowd, Noel Marin and Keir McBride. Um, Frank, as he'll tell you himself, his qualities are that he has a good way of his young lads and that he gathers good people around him. And you know what? That has been tried and tested and he's been proven correct this summer. Noel Marin, as he did as a player, brought the emotion and passion to the table. Mick O'Dowd, would like me to tell you that he brought the brains to the table. <laughs> but when I seen him on the sideline in Oma less than a month after open heart surgery, I nearly had a heart attack myself. <laughs> but it just shows what is the dedication he had to these young lads. And to Kieran McBride, I want to especially thank Kieran McBride, who stepped into the breach early in the year, when literally no one else in the county would, not one. And we spent a month looking for people. And from the minute he landed, I was up there at most of them training sessions. He preached about acting like a winner, playing like a winner, thinking like a winner, to think win all the time. And from the moment we won, he has said to me on more than one occasion that this is where we should set the bar, that winning Ulster titles should be the norm, not the exception. And I agree with him because my own motivation 10 years ago was that I was fed up watching modern teams getting beaten across the grades on a regular basis that we needed to change things from the bottom up structurally in order to be able to contest seriously every year and win titles on a regular basis, not just once every 25 years. So thank you, Keir. Um, to the minor players themselves, again, it was a magnificent achievement and very well done, but I would like to lay down a challenge to you lads. Um, the next couple of years, 18, 19, 20, are very important years with, your, with respect to your own development, both as a person and as a player. And with respect as, uh, with, to your playing careers, it's up to you lads now to decide, do you want to rest on your laurels and spend the next year celebrating? Or do you want to focus on developing yourselves physically, mentally, and with your attitude? Um, I was involved with these fellas at on the 14 level as a development squad manager before I took up this position. I had no doubt then and since that they would win that Ulster title, no doubt whatsoever, that they had the potential to do it. I can, I'll stay it here tonight too. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that they have the potential, the potential, along with the team that preceded them, the previous minor team results are final as well, and the group behind them are very strong, they have the potential to not only come back and retain their own sort of title, but win an All-Ireland title. That I have no doubt about. But it's going to depend on what attitude you take and what decisions you make. And particularly the leaders amongst you. And you know who I'm talking about. You can decide now to lead the celebrations or you can decide to lead by example and drive the thing on. An example, by the way, that was set by the two lads that won All-Stars last year or last week, 
Conor McManus didn't even play a county minor football. He's now one of the best players in Ireland. Colin Walsh was on the first development squad te 10 years ago. Colin always showed up, could always be relied upon, and has gone from strength to strength since playing in the final in 2008. And I want to thank them lads and congratulate them on the reward last week. Well, last week. Um, it would be remiss of me not to thank the families of all our players, minor and senior, for the sacrifices that they have made in allowing these lads at both levels to devote the time to developing themselves and reaching the success that they have. Thank you very, very much. And most of you, most of you are here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> to our county team sponsors, represented by Jacinta here tonight, Jacinta Nangil, um, I want to thank Investec not only for their generosity, but their loyalty to us. They've been with us for the last six years and are committed for another two years through thick and thin. A year ago, they could have walked away and you wouldn't have blamed them for walking away. But that wasn't to be the case. Michael came to us. And I want to thank him not only for his generosity, but that loyalty. But I'm delighted that they stayed on board and were there to share that success with this year. Thank you very much indeed to Michael and Jacinta. <laughs> and I want to give a minute to my colleagues on the county board, whenever things aren't going right, it's always the county board gets the blame. Always. I haven't heard one person praise the county board since there was success this year. There's an awful lot of work has been done at an awful lot of levels for the last 10 years to bring about this success. It didn't happen by accident. I want to thank all the people who have been, along, been involved along the way, and particularly the people I've been working with for the last three years. They've been a credit and a joy to work with, and I thank them very much. Thank you. In conclusion, and in advance of what I have no doubt will be a very good night, I want to thank Colm Heron, a sponsor also, and the Hotel Hillgrove for, I have no doubt it will be an excellent night, and to Seamus McElwain and his committee, Mariam, Eileen, Anita, Sean and Michael Owen. Thank you very much and enjoy the night. Paul Ashen, Bawailam. Fault and Nisha Kurriff, Kaihir, our Electron, Electron, Corley Ollie, Martin McAvinney, and I should have the Irish to a tea. Good morning, good morning. Kaihir, Paul, uh, Rooney, Sean, and especially because of Cards of Gale, Tahas Morum, Avan Chokhanokt. Um, this is the second time this has happened to me. I had a speech at the Pulse the final and it went out the window. This was going out the window as well. Uh, I only want to say thanks to this and um, the day that we had the Ulster final day that Gronin and Paul have outlined the great successes Monaghan had all year. Uh, but to me, as a proud Monaghan man, that day, that Sunday, uh, between the minors, the win the minors, the, min the win the minors had, then to have uh, the start that our seniors had, the Jubilee team presentation, which was a team that I grew up with as well then and to have waited so long, and for all that to come together on the one day, uh, I know it was the best day ever I had, and for me to be a part of that, uh, and having the honour, uh, that was also given to me by the people of Monaghan, because I started with my club and, and Monaghan County Board, and then I got to the position that I'm in, and um, only there's a few boys in Bally Bay I could say that I probably could have made the county team, but I better tell the truth and say I was never going to make a, county, never make a club team, never make a county team, and what I felt that day, that's the nearest ever I'll get to playing or representing my county, and that, um, to me, meant so much. And I also felt on that day, I felt the shoulder or the hand on my shoulder of all the people from Monaghan who had toiled and all the work they did for Monaghan over the years. And I felt that I was there representing them. They were the people who trained me and they were the people who trained the guys who were on the field as well to do what they did. Absolutely fabulous day for Monaghan. I only want to say thank you very much for that. It has been capped then again by, it's only just getting, getting better. The All-Stars last week, again, uh, both the, the men's and then the ladies on top of that as well, and then this event here tonight. Uh, it, I, I don't know that uh, any year that will ever top it. I'm sorry for being uh, not producing a speech here as, as a, um, a sort of an independent Ulster Council chairman. Uh, I just can't do it. I'm a Monaghan man, and I loved every minute of that day. I wish it wouldn't stop. I probably have to resign now because nothing's ever going to top this year, but I really want to say thank you very much. A special thanks for this, this invitation uh, to myself and Gráinne. And I'm really looking forward to the night. And again, thank you very much. And I hope that we all enjoy such a wonderful night. And I've no doubt that we will. Good morning.
Thanks, Martin, for that. Okay, well, before we start our meal, I'd like to introduce my co-host for this evening. He's going to tell us a little bit more about tops and tails, and there's envelopes on the table as well that he's going to let you know how much money he's looking for to put into those envelopes tonight for the raffle later on this evening. Can you please give a very warm welcome then to the very shy, very retiring, Mr. Adrian Logan. Thanks, Gonya. I tell you what, did you win the Ulster title at all, did you? I never heard as watery applause or welcome for a county that swept the boards, even have the chairman of the Ulster Council, you poor Duffy, running the flaming place. And what do you do? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to turn and say, was it a great year for Monaghan or was it a great year for Monaghan? I'll do it again, was it a great year for Monaghan? Was it a great year for Monaghan? Right, here we go. Now we get down to the bring Logie, because Logie tries to get ready. <laughs> And you have a little envelope, by the way, too, I always say these things. Aren't the girls looking lovely tonight? <laughs> Aye. Aren't the girls looking lovely tonight? Yeah. Well, girls, do you see this little white envelope with blue writing? This is not a female-free zone. This is for a raffle of some fantastic prizes. It's also a part of Heads and Tails, which we're going to play and give a few hundred euros to the winner for a wee bit of crack. What I'd like you to do is to give generously. As the good doctors we called them up north, Ian Paisley would say, make sure it's a silent collection. We'd like at least a tenner because it costs a fortune to keep the teams winning. I have to say congratulations to all in Monaghan, but I want to particularly welcome, I want to particularly welcome here tonight a good friend of mine, Kieran McBride, because he's from Toronto as well. Where are you, Kieran? Where are you? Good lad, Kieran. God bless you. Hey, nice to be for the class of the audience. Boys and girls, we're going to come around and collect these very, very quickly. A lot of presentations to do. Please give generously, and we'll come back to you very, very shortly. Thank you very much indeed. Ron, you there. Okay, thanks Adrian for that. Okay, we're about to start the meal. It's going to come around now in a few moments' time. So I'd like to call on the Bishop Reverend Liam McDade to say grace before meals. Shh, we just get some cuneus, Laradol. Shh. I'm, I'm not here to represent beaten Ulster finalists. <laughs> but uh, it, it was a wonderful day for Monaghan and no one from Donegal begrudged of the marvellous victory that you had in the double that day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We thank you, Lord, for all your gifts to us, particularly for the gift of life and the gift of health. We ask you to bless the gathering here this evening and all those who are dear to us. We ask you to bless the food we are about to enjoy and those who have prepared it through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, enjoy the meal. We'll be back with more entertainment after that. Can you bring them back to my private suite? Can you hear you? Can you please, while Reverend Bishop Gates says grace after me?
and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished guests. Distinguished guests. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, before we start the second half, I think we'd have to show our appreciation to the staff here for the beautiful meal we had here tonight in the Hill Global. It was simply five, five star and the, uh, the young boys and lassies were magnificent, so thank you very much indeed. I also uh, have a very special announcement. Uh, Fergus Coffey, Francis, they had a grandchild this week. So uh, that's the first grandchild. So where are you? Uh, congratulations. The, uh, the lineage of great football continues for the Crawford dynasty here in Monaghan. So well done. Now, folks, what we're going to do, uh, I got 200 pounds, well, 200 euro cash from Marion over here. Is that right, Marion? Uh, Marion, do, do they all know you, do they? Are some of you staying here in the hotel? Well, if some of you aren't in the best suite, the bridal suite is because it's taken up by Marion. So if anybody's interested, come along like that, you know, a wee wink and a wee, wee, wee glass of wine, Marion, what do you think? Any chance? That right, girl, isn't it? The last of you. Am I telling any fibs? No. I'm telling the truth, aren't I? Where are God, you listen, are you? I'm a brave fella. I haven't even got paid yet, either, too. Anyway, look, boys and girls, on your feet, we're going to play heads and tails for 200 quid for a wee bit of crack here tonight in Mullahan for this fantastic night's wee bit of celebration. So everybody on your feet, come on, let's go a bit of crack. Let's go on your head. We're going to play heads and tails. Now, this is very simple. This is, uh, even for anybody who sneaked in from Calvin, now, this is very, very simple. All right. You put your hands on your head, or as I often say, you, can, you put your hands on your arse, you got to put your hands on somebody else's arse. It's entirely up to yourselves. Nothing to do with me. Isn't that right, Marion? That okay, darn fair pity, right? Are you not getting up to play? Marion, you look, Marion, get up to play. Come on, darn. You hold the hold. There's 650 people here, but wait till you get on your feet. Get up, Marion. There you go. She's on her feet. Right, boys and girls, on your head or on your bum. All for one and a bit of crack. I have the money here for you. And, of course, you're free into the raffle if you haven't paid. I presume you've all handed in your envelopes, haven't you? Ladies and gentlemen, first up, it's... It's tails. If your hands are on your bum, stay standing. The rest of you sit down. Right. <laughs> There's that bigger crowd. I can't see if you're cheating at the back now, so you have, to be, you have to be good to me here. On your head or on your bum again, folks. Let's go. Come up. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this time it's... It's tails. If your hands are on your bum, stay standing. The rest of you, bye-bye. If there's anybody sitting at your table, give them a bit of a cheer and a bit of encouragement. Come on, that. On your heads or on your bum, here we go again. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's heads. <laughs> you were lucky enough to stay at all, boy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, look at this, the county chairman's still in here. Great, you're from like you, haven't you? Boys and girls, here we go. I can't see us out the back. On your heads or on your bum, here we go. All for 200 big ones, ladies and gentlemen. This time it's... It's tails. And your hands are on your arse. Stay standing the rest of you. Bye-bye. Wait, but speed it up. Come on, here we go again. Come on. Can you keep this going? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this time it's... It's tails. Hey, who is? Who's left? Okay, so people are at the back down there. I can't see you. Hands up and wave at me if you're left. You're still down there. There's still one putter down the back. Here we go. On your heads, on your bum. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Oh. I'll have to do it again. Sorry, that'll be... Because through this cheating, wasn't it, marching? Eh? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's heads. Right. Whoever's left, come on up to the stage. Come on up here. Come on. Come on up here, whoever's left. Come on. Come on, whoever's left here. Come on. Give them a big hand here now. Come on, let's see how many there is.
Look at this here, hey, yeah. For 200 euro. Hey. That man, that man walked from Bali Bay to be up here. Look at that there, you miserable soul. So what about Right. On your heads or on your bum. Folks, give him a big hand. Come on for a bit of crack. On your heads or on your bum. It could be a long walk home for some days. On your head or on your bum. Ladies and gentlemen, it's tails. If your hands are on your arse, they're standing the rest of you. Bye-bye. They spread out in a bunch. This is exciting, isn't it? Hey. Do it against me. The boys think they have a chance of winning this too. Anyway, here we go. On your heads or on your bum. Let's go, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's tails. If your hands are on your bum, stay standing. Then you just get, get in tight, get in tight. <laughs> right, folks, come on, shout for your wee favorite one here. Come on. Hey. What's your name? Brian. Where are you from? Tyrone. 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 Sorry for asking you such a hard question. Jesus Christ. Hey. Hey. Well, what about you, kid? Come on No, the old in your house, no? I know. Hey, here we go. Right. Here we go. On your heads or on your bum. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's tails. If your hands are on your bum, stay standing. Wait a minute. Go get back here. Get back. It's never happened to me before. Get back here. You scan all my heads and fuck just Come on. Get back on there again. Ray Run. Hey, girl. Come back here. Jesus Christ of Almighty. Hang on, is anybody in here from Calvin? Is there for Christ's sake? Right. You all can't have it in your heads or on your bum, all right? So somebody make up. Have a wee look around this. Okay. On your heads or on your bum. She was, I told you this would last two minutes. This is 23 and a half minutes. This has lasted us here so far. On your heads or on your bum, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, it's heads. If your hands are on your heads, you stay the rest of your bye bye. You away, madam? You enjoying yourself? Good night's crack, isn't it? Paul Quinn's sister, no. What's your name, darling? Jacqueline. Jacqueline, you look lovely. Nobody, take a hit, you come down there. <laughs> right, look at this here. All these fine. You're from Peru? Where are we? You're a cert. Hold on a second. On your head or on your bum, here we go. You enjoying yourselves? Any chance of paying attention here, talking with you? you? Where are you from? Latin. Where? Latin. Latin. I thought you said Latin here. Latin. Yeah. Oh, for great, what a great club, what a great area. On your head or on your bum, girls and boys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, <laughs> it's tails. Hey, what's the chances of that? Hey, what happened? Now, hold on a second, what's your name? Shannon. Where are you from, Shannon? Clonus. Clonus. What's your name? Laura. Laura, you're from? Yeah. Laura from Latin. Kathy. Where are you from, Kathy? Bally Bay. Bally Bay. So we've got uh, Clonus, Latin, and Bally Bay. Woo! Okay. I'm trying to do a bit of work here. I'm trying to do a bit of work here. I right. interrupt you whenever you're working. Right. Here's it. Right, girls. I'm sorry, I can't. If I, I can ask the chairman, I can ask the secretary, there's not 100 euro on the brick. No, no, no. Oh, look at that there, eyes glazed over there. On your head or on your bum, here we go, girls. Oh, excitement, boys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'll show it to uh, Uchtaron, let them see. There you are, just to give you a wee idea, correct? It's heads! <laughs> There you are. Congratulations. Watch yourself down there. Lady from Luck. Isn't that lovely, folks? Well done. Congratulations. And thanks to the girls. The, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Adrian Logan. And if I'm all right there in the night, I'm still Adrian Logan. If I'm crap, I'm Marty Morrissey. Uh, I just would like to say that uh, Jackie Fullerton sends his regrets. Is her still at the cleaners? 
And I also had a very special message, wishing you all a very, very good night and regrets from Sean Kavanagh. <laughs> he hopes you have a very, very uh, enjoyable evening, as we all do from Tyrone. But boys, listen, I'm from Dungannon. Like, not much happens in Dungannon. Like, we're not twinned anybody. Like, we're, we're considering a suicide pact with Dunloy, but that's about it. But uh, it's a bit rough in Dungannon, you know, because I was in bed with a vision last week. She who must be obeyed. And uh, a bit of a noise downstairs. And I went down, there was an intruder. I said, here, what the hell are you at? He says, I'm in here looking for money and jewellery. I said, hold on a second, I'll stick on the light, but both of a look. <laughs> but uh, we're not the worst in Dunyanin, you know, because I, I was walking through the square last week and I saw Mary McCann. I hope the Archbishop is away here. But anyway, and Mary's, Mary's left. Mary's left. Martin, help me out here. What would you call it? Mary, sorry. Mary's breast was, left breast was hanging out. Now you're out over and says, Logie, what about you? He says, Mary, Mary, your left breast is hanging out. She went, oh, Jesus, I left the child in the bus. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be too rude now, but I'm not allowed to be. <laughs> Paddy and Seamus were having a pint in Dunyanin. Paddy turned to Seamus and he said, hey, Seamus, if I finish this pint and go home to your wife, make love to her, Seamus, and she has a baby, will that leave us related? And she be thought for a while, he says, no party, just even. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm on myself. Isn't it great to see the 1988 team here, all those great scars of years ago? Unbelievable. Eh? I see some of my old pals, Jerry McCarville. I met Jerry McCarville, he used to manage Dungannon. Well, no, he used to talk about his manager in Dungannon, but all, like, you know what I mean? And I see the old dad's going well, Jerry, isn't it? Hey, very plenty of kid, hey. Anyway, Weight Watchers. But anyway, hey. <laughs> Jerry was in Dungannon last week, and I met him up his feet, and he said, Logie, I'm an awful pain. I said, what's wrong? He says, I have a terrible sore tooth. He says, come on, we'll go to the dentist. Brought him down to the dentist, and the dentist says, Mr. Mr. McCarville will give you an injection. Oh, no, I'm allergic to needles. He says, well, I'll give you gas and air. And he says, no, no, I'm allergic to gas and air. Yeah. He says, I'll give you two Viagra. He says, two Viagra? He says, well, that ease the pain. And he says, no, but it'll give you something to hold on to whenever I'm working at you. <laughs> but the... Uh... <laughs> oh, I've had to not be too rude here. <laughs> Malachi works here, isn't he? Where's Malachi? Where are you? Where is he from Anna's finest? Where are you, Malachi? I didn't. There he is. You know, Malachi, stand up for the sea, you know, and I kiss him and don't know you, Malachi. Stand up. Back go on. Stand up, Malachi. Malachi, stand up there, see you. Get up, get up. They say it every time, you know, you make love, you lose a hair to your head. <laughs> so, <laughs> would like to thank Malachi for ending up in a very busy schedule. He'll be with us here tonight in the Hill Road. Malachi, thanks very much. But Malachi was on a plane. He was on a plane recently. David Cameron, Barack Obama, the Holy Father, a schoolgirl, and him. The plane's about to crash, there's only four parachutes. Barack Obama got up and he says, I'm the leader of the free world. I need to be given a parachute, I have to go home and save the world and do all the usual stuff. They say, that's okay, so they gave him a parachute and he jumped out. David Cameron says, I'm the leader of Great Britain. I need to be there to sort out the Euro, the whole economic crisis. I need to be looked after, I need to get a parachute. They gave him a parachute and he jumped out. Malachi Rourke says, who did I tell you? I am the most famous and the best football manager in the game. I am the most intelligent reader and coach in Gaelic football. And the sport needs me for my intelligence. I need to be given a parachute. So, I agreed on him. He jumped out. The wee girl turns to the Holy Father and she says, Holy Father, we'll, we'll take a parachute each and we'll jump out. He says, my child, he says, I'm willing to go and meet my maker, having a lovely, long, fulfilling life. You take the last parachute and you jump out. She says, no, Holy Father, there's two parachutes. What do you mean there's two parachutes? But she says, do you remember that most intelligent, exceptional football manager? He says, yes. Well, he's only after jumping out the side door with my school bag on his shoulders. <laughs> but the uh, boys and girls, we're going to head off and do a wee bit of presentations here. I have a list. Where's my sheet? Hello.
I better not tell any more, will I? <laughs> what we're going to do now is do a presentation to the 1988 Ulster Championship winning team. Before we do that, we're going to sit back and look at a wee small video, which will just give you a wee taster of the great moments way back in 88, whenever you achieved that fantastic Ulster title. So sit back, enjoy this first, and then we'll have the presentation. Thank you. Very, very tight angle, McCarran slides the ball between the uprights. Bernie Murray, the true defence opens in front of him. Off the upright, not on the narrow level. Even McEnany, the corner forward. Oh, a terrible, terrible mistake. We're scouting Nudy Hughes and Cramers are late. Punishing it for their chances for Mullahan. Hughes making time for himself. Oh, he's enjoying himself right there. Referee Michael Cranny calling an end to a first half. One of the best first halves we have seen in Ulster Wings in recent years. Monaghan playing this time right to left. It's a roll on the red. In the red position, but again, it's Monaghan, it's Nudie Hughes. And the Tyrone defenders panic somewhat when he gets possession. Oh, and again, it's Beautiful score from one of them. Some magnificent shooting here today. Ever play from David Byrne. Michael O'Dowd working the one two. Just forceful movement. That was a marvelous, marvelous score from one of them. Ray McCarran with a great chance. No mistake this time. No indecision in the draw of the press. Presenting the opportunity for Owen Hamilton and the substitute gets his name on the score sheet. To Stephen White and the former life man. That's a great score. And the referee Michael Cunny calls for the ball. Monaghan are lost our champions for the 14th time after a tremendous and absolutely superb Ulster final. Ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation of the Ulster Champions 1988. And can I please ask uh, Paul Curran and Martin McAvaney to come forward who will help uh, do the presentation. As I announce the lads, I'll announce them in probably in threes. And if they could come to this side of the stage, first of all, and just stay on the stage, we'd appreciate that very much indeed. And ladies and gentlemen, it's nice to have Paul back up again. We never got the opportunity to thank him for a wonderful speech at the start of the evening. He did a powerful job. Where are you, Paul? Show your appreciation, ladies and gentlemen, for Harry Monaghan. Yep. Right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We'll bring them up in threes, in no particular order. Fergus Caulfield, Dermot McKenna, David Byrne. Seamus McElroy, Patrick Hamilton, Hugh McGrother. <laughs> James Kearns, Sean McKenna, Jared Moan. <laughs> Next up, John Finn, Stephen White, Mick O'Dowd. <laughs> and next to receive your applause, Kevin Cahar, Eamon McEnany, and Eamon Murphy. <laughs> next on the list, Jerry McCarville, Owen Hamilton, and Nudie Hughes, who unfortunately are all star, who can't make it with us, who can't be with us this evening, he sends his regrets. Jerry McCarville, Owen Hamilton, and Nudie Hughes.
Also missing this evening, PJ Finlay. But coming up next, Ray McCarran and Bernie Murray. <laughs> then there's Declan Flanagan and Declan Lochman. Next on the list, unfortunately, sends his regrets. He's down working with Roy Keane and Martin O'Neill, the captain, Kieran Murray, and Brendan Murray. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, or uh, not last but not least on the list, sorry, right here this evening, Eugene Sherry, Jared Hoy, and Paddy Linden. Would you also please show your appreciation as we mentioned and ask the management to come up on that particular year. The physio, Cahill Hand, Jerry Connolly, selector, Paddy Tabby, selector, Michael Burns, selector. <laughs> Jared McKeague, selector, Niall Moyna, and the team manager in that historic year, Sean McKeague. Get your presentation. Show them over there and get their week. Ladies and gentlemen, in this very special night here in the Hillgrove and Monaghan, show your appreciation for the 1988 Ulster Senior Football Champions, Monaghan. One second there, lads, I get out in front of you. Where's Eva McEnany? Eva, where are you? Where's Eamon? Come on out, Eamon. We'll get a photograph of Eamon after we get our, just get our wee interview done. Well, sir, how are you getting on? This is some night for you. Yeah, it's a great night. Great night for Monaghan. Great night for uh, all the people of Monaghan because it's probably the most successful year they've ever had. And it, uh, as Martin McAvinney said earlier on, you know, that you couldn't have been in a better place for a Monaghan person than in Clonus on also final day this year. I know I was only about three or four when I was winning there back in 1980, but I remember you. <laughs> I remember you. know, you really were a special team. You know, I remember you were free kicks, everything. You were, you were, you were people that I looked up to because you were real. You, you were legends of household names. But you were sitting down there at the table. You're delighted. Thanks for God. After all these years, you're delighted that there's now a new team that can go into the history books and not use lads. Well, absolutely. Like the, the young people in Monaghan need people to look up to and. No better than the minors and the seniors of, of the current uh, time because, you know, as you can see here, we're not standing the best times the best, you know, like so. <laughs> it's. Um, Speak for yourself. Uh, I remember being a young fellow looking up to you, Logie, when you were uh, interviewing people as well. So just, just to put that in context. <laughs> You're very cheeky, aren't you? Yeah. You've never, you never got too many interviews off you, I'll tell you that. Well, you know, when you were, inter you were interviewing, you always had to be on your toes, you know, especially you being from Tyrone and all. <laughs> <laughs> but you enjoyed your time. Gaelic, we're just talking about there. Gaelic is very special. You did it as a player, as a manager, you know, and then you come to this here. It's what makes the GA very special. Whenever your, your own people recognize you after all these years. Yeah, but it, like, it, I'd have to say, like, for the fellas here behind me and, and for Sean and that, like, it was, we were lucky we all grew up at the same time together because there's a lot of people played with Monon over the years and never got anything. And, um, you know, you don't get anywhere without a team, and it's all about a team and what they do together. And I think that the teams with Monaghan this year showed that, and that's why they, they won what they won because they all pulled together. And you know, as everyone here behind me, I'd say, would say the same. We were so proud to be from Monaghan that day in Clonus, and it's great to have stars of the future for the young people in Monaghan to look up to. Uh, yeah, thank you very much indeed. And yet you do stand the test well, ladies and gentlemen. Sean McKeag, Sean, come on up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's a gentleman who's done it uh, as a management. He did it, obviously, as Uchtron as well. He's given all he can back to the association. He's one of your own. I think you should put your hands together. A big, big round of applause for Sean McGeek. <laughs> Sean.
Sean, was it was it easy to manage a, a team of such talented footballers like that? You must be joking. <laughs> Uh, no, they were a very good, easy team to manage because uh, they were just totally committed to doing what they should be doing. They wanted to win for Monaghan, and they did win for Monaghan. And of course, too, in their, in their spirit with all that, they had players who would, who would die for the jersey, but they also had quality as well, hadn't they? Not, I don't mean just uh, uh, talent, they had ability, but they had attitude. Yes, and it's, you know, without attitude, you, you go nowhere nowadays, but uh, yes, they were a great bunch of people to be involved with. It was pleasure and it was a great opportunity for them to entrust each other to what was required at the time and they were very good and they succeeded in that regard. And are you glad like Eamon and probably like the rest of them that uh, the history makers have now been, there's a new mantle, you have a new bunch of lads now to look up to and for people to worship here in Monaghan and support and follow? I think that uh, every generation makes up their own stars and their own, their own people so uh, hopefully we live long enough to see another a uh, great day in Crow Park with the Monaghan team. Uh, hopefully it will be sooner rather than later. And uh, if that's the case, I think we'll all die happy. Sean, thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please show your appreciation now for the squad, the management, the players of the Monaghan Senior Football Team 1988. Right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Show your appreciation again as the lads leave the stage. As Adrian said, well done to the 1988 team. We're going to move on to our second presentation this evening, which is, of course, to the minor team. But before we do that, I want everyone to sit back, relax. We're going to listen to the final moments of that Ulster Championship title win. <laughs> McMahon is standing over the ball. He looks, he looks confident. He looks confident. Sean Fox is dancing on the goal line. Can you believe it? It's down to this 3 9 to 2 14. Fergal McMahon to give Monaghan a one point lead. He's running up. It's in the back of the net. 2 14. Can you believe it? A one point lead for Monaghan. It's vital we win this next kick. It's out. Desmond Ward's the man. He's the support of the engagement. He plays at the cross to number 23. Yes, he's he's the, the, the vice, the vice is this gone. Is unbelievable. We can't believe it. What a dark man we're seeing here. We dart that throw in for one last chance here. We can't believe no, it. Yeah. One in time. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Well done to the Monaghan minor team. And of course, well done to one man in particular, Mr. Sean McCaffrey. Sean, can I ask you to come up on stage here for a few words? Well, I can say that's an understatement to say that was enthusiastic and that was passionate. You really enjoyed doing that game. That was madness, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I suppose <laughs> when you listen back on it there, you realise, geez, I didn't realise it could get that high whenever I was talking. <laughs> and somebody informed me afterwards, for a wee man, you make an awful lot of noise. But uh, yeah, simply got carried away. I suppose we were watching the highlights there earlier on and it's only now you can reflect back and realise that you played a, a part, I suppose, in what was an incredible day in Clonus. And you could see as the game progressed, they were coming more and more into it. And we seen with the penalty at the end, and we had to win that next ball, and we won that next ball, and the point came. And I know, I remember at the time, clearly, whenever the voice had went beyond anybody that anybody could hear, there was only dogs probably could hear me at one stage. 
And Johnny O'Keefe was beside me. He handed me a bottle of water and we got water in. John O'Connor was brilliant. He took over for a minute or two till I got me wits about me again. And Father Brian Darcy was sitting down in front of us. And when we got the penalty, I jumped up. And anybody who's familiar with the back, Jerry Arthur Stanton, he thought I was going to go out over the top of him. And he turned. He never watched the end of the game. He just sat looking up, back up. And I could actually see him below us as well. And he was doubled over laughing at this mad get behind him that was completely losing it as well. But listen, I was embarrassed. No point I was embarrassed slightly after the finish. And I thought, oh, my God. Ah. Not at all. <laughs> Just in relation to that, the reaction that you got from people after that comedy. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's probably when I hit home and I suddenly realised that I'd played, or well, I didn't play the part, the team done that part, but I was there maybe to recall. And it suddenly just, the phone started hopping, it's on silent in my pocket, and I could start to feel it vibrating. And John O'Connor was doing a kind of a synopsis of what was going on, and I looked down, and there was just message after message after message coming in of people saying about the commentary, the commentary, the commentary. Nudie Cues was coming in to get ready for the senior game. And he said to me as well, he says, you want to see the back car park out the back? He says, every car had doors open, windows down. The stewards have all left the position. They're all in wearing cars, listening to what's going on. There's people sitting in the cars want to come in to the start of the senior game. They don't come in until they find out what's going on at the minor game. And they do want to leave and miss the bit in between and that. So I suppose it, th that reaction then suddenly made me realise that we played a little bit maybe. And it was wonderful. The local radio station, it was our first time. We'd missed out on 88 because the station only started in 1989. So it was fantastic, and what an occasion it was for Northern Sound to be there as well, to record it all. And I suppose it's only now when I realise that maybe in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years' time, they're all gathered here again to recollect and recall the minors of this year, and 25 years on maybe, it'll be my voice that'll be there maybe bringing it again. And it's nice to know that, but what a day. What a day, and we'll certainly be recollecting that. Sean, well done. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause. Sean McCaffrey from Northern Sound. Thanks, Grania. John, that was unbelievable, but swear to God, unbelievable. You want to hear the drone version on U101? Listen to it. Hey, they were crying into their mics, but there you are. Like all good drone people. Hey, we're going to go on now and do the presentation to the Ulster Championship and League medals to the Monaghan Minor team. Could I please ask our presentation party of Paul Curran again, Martin McAvinney, and Jacinta Nangle from Investec, your sponsor. So let's show our appreciation for Jacinta. She represents uh, Investec. We put their money with our mouth is for Monaghan. And if you could help us, if you could come up the right hand side, it would be a wee bit easier, you know. Some of the lads in 88, like McCarver, were doting and they come up the wrong end, so the young boys will know where they're going. Sorry, Jerry. We go back a long way, don't worry, folks. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, the Monaghan Minor football medal presentation here tonight in the Hillgrove. Would you please welcome, again, in no particular order, Niall Rooney, Michael Gehan, and Mark Fox. Kevin O'Hanlon, Alan McCahey, Aidan Quinn. Aaron Birdie, Dahi Colton, Donacha Dolan. Aaron Jones, Mark Kelly, Fergal Irvin. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Lynch, Kayleen McElwain, Michael Metzger. <laughs> Following that comes Mark McGee, Andrew Kieran, and Barry McGinn. Again, show your appreciation for Donald Megan, Sean McMahon. Michal McCarville. I'll have to slow down because they're a bit faster than the 88 team, as you can see. <laughs> but then they would be, wouldn't they? What am I doing standing here congratulating these boys on the stage after the hammered us in the minor final? Eh? Were they magnificent that day? Ladies and gentlemen, minors are unbelievable, aren't they? These young lads were a real credit to us all. And I know you'll give them a fantastic round of applause when we go round to the very, very last of them. 
Next up, I think we can go with Mervyn Brown, Dermot Gleeson, and Paul McCardle. And again, show your appreciation for Shane Grimes, Michal O'Dowd, Fergal McMahon. <laughs> We're getting down to the final few, and then of course there'll be photographs and a few interviews. Would you please show your appreciation and welcome onto the stage tonight here in the Hill Grove, Connor McCarthy, Adam Trainer, and Ryan McAnespe. <laughs> Next up, show your appreciation for Desmond Ward, David McAllister, and Niall Lochman. Next on the list, Michael Murnahan, Aid Curran, Adam Kiernan. Please welcome Kieran Martin, Shane Trainer, and Connor Ford. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, last but certainly not least, the captain of that historic team. Show your appreciation for Kevin Lochran. We're lucky we've got a big stage here. Right. Please welcome the team management. Selector, Noel Marin. Selector, Mick O'Dowd. Team trainer, Kieran McBride. And the team manager, Frank Brady. Lads, if you let me out through there, I need to get talking to Frank. Where's the manager? Where's the boss? Kevin Lockran, Kevin, where are you? Captain, come on up, Kevin. Come on up here to have a quick word with you. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain of this fine bunch of young lads has to brought you great success. Show your appreciation. Kevin Lockran, Kevin. Hey, come on, that folks! Come on, raise the roof for this boy. <laughs> talented, talented, and good looking. Isn't that right? It must have been fantastic occasion to play in that match and to win it because I'm sure at some stage you must have thought that was it. Uh, you know, it was just brilliant. But uh, even what were we seven, eight, nine points behind? You just knew with a with the bunch of lads we have that it was still possible to come back. It was just belief more than anything. A great memory for you. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's even watching back that video there now. It's just shivers. Like it just you'll never ever forget that day. And the penalty, did you fancy him? Do you think he was always gonna put it away? Definitely, yeah. he's a club club mind of mine, I knew rightly. I knew straight away he Ferg just does not miss them. Where is he? Where is he now? Where where is it? Oh come on out the back, come on down here to talk to you. Thank you very much, Quill. Well, thanks to him. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, he's the man that got the goal, that got the result. Come on, that. Fergal, well done, boy. Congratulations. Were you nervous? Oh, you, you have to be nervous in that there, but sure, just hopefully, thankfully it went in. Like all good players, but nervous, but at the same time, you weren't going to let anybody else take it. You wanted it, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah, you, you have to just step up, and thankfully it went in, and that's it. You just you look back at that time and just 
it's the best time, really. That's and it's great memories for you, isn't it? And a great, like, you know, you'll be friends forever with these lads here. Sure, even looking back, listening to the commentary and watching the video, like, you'll, you'll never forget it. Like, you'll be looking back in 20 or 30 years and just watching it again, it'll be the exact same. I'd like to think that maybe it might not be 20 or 30 years before you get another minor title as well. Ladies and gentlemen, that's another young star of the future. Show your appreciation. Frank. Frank Brady. Come on out, Frank, for a quick word. Ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation for the hard working manager who must have thought of us all up at one stage in Clonus. You always had faith in these lads. I remember listening to you a couple of times in the interview, and you always talked about the attitude they had, how they were great lads, they got, and they showed it in the end, didn't they? Talent. Cream always comes to the top. And we, will, we were going, beginning to realize that in Monaghan now, that we have the cream, we have the talent, and we will be beating Tyrone more regularly than we used to. There was no need to stick the boot in low. We all asked you a decent question. Like, you know, but these are great bunch of lads. Like, look at them. Like, they're the, the, they're the future, aren't they? Yeah, if you had a teenage daughter now, you mightn't think that, but yeah, they are the future. <laughs> it's the bishop away, isn't it? Hey, but it was a marvellous day. What a what an occasion. Like you like to come back like that. That's that's something you have to dream of to be what eight, nine points behind come back like that was incredible. Oh yeah, but your the the, the guy that came back from the heart attack kept telling us on the phone, keep going, keep going, we are going to come back, we are going to come back. So if you have Mick O'Dowd roaring into Dinky's ear and my ear all day, we're coming back, we're coming back. And he came back in the dressing gown to train him one night, so we were going to come back. Well, the dressing gown was pink as well, by the way. Well, Frank, I have to say you broke a lot of her own hearts that day, but it was a day never to be forgotten. I think in the annals of Ulster GA, Ulster Minor GA, you happen to get the result. Ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation for the future of Monaghan football. The Ulster Minor Football Champions of 2013 and their management. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, after this, we have one more presentation to do to uh, yet another important and famous team. So we show your appreciation as they leave the stage. The Ulster Minor Champions of 2013, Monaghan. Okay, we're just moving on in a few moments' time to the final presentation of this evening. But beforehand, I believe somewhere in the audience there is one of Monaghan's lifelong supporters. Tommy McCardle, I think, is going to make his way up on the stage to have a wee chat with me. Tommy, are you there? Oh, here we go. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Tommy McCardle. Tommy, I'm going to stand here and you can take that mic and stand beside Thanks, you. Stand right. out a wee bit beside me there. Stand a wee bit out beside you about here. Tommy, you're looking fantastic. You've got the hat. I always look fantastic. I know you do. you got right. the scarf. But where's the jersey? Uh, well, I wouldn't insult the jersey by wearing it because I see too many wee fat fellas, uh, five foot two, 16 stone, the arse out the front, out the back and the belly out the front. And number 13 McManus written on the back. <laughs> And, and you say to yourself, that's definitely not McManus. Tell me about the match. Where did you see it? I saw it in London in a pub in Greenwich on television. And why in I London? Seeing me daughter. I was always seeing my daughter and I had to go around the half of the pubs in Greenwich. But it's very easy to go around. You can go around a number of pubs. All you have to do is go and say, 
Are you showing the Ulster final on Sunday? And it's safe to say, what, Mike? You know they're in the wrong place. So eventually I came along to a woman and I said, are they showing the Ulster final on Sunday? Is that Gaelic? She says. And I said, yeah. And we show all the Gaelic matches here, she said. So that was how I managed to get into the, the pub, to find the pub. And we went into the, I went into the pub. And I went to check with the, when the London uh, Mayo match was on. And um, there was uh, about 12 old men watching it. And I just thought to myself, no matter what the Mayo men or, or, or London supporters, they're sad men, you know what I mean, at the moment. <laughs> and gradually they, they disappeared and I was left with one of them. And I said to him, as you will, in courtesy, I said, uh, where are you from, Kerry? He says, and I, he says, where are you from? I says, Monan. And he says, hey, 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 you're up again today. <laughs> so being the lovely man at Yard, Tommy, I'm sure you bought him a drink. I did not. I let the little bastard go and blow a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so as the matches went on, did anybody interested in come into the pub or who else came in? In fact, like, just there and, and uh, the son of Brian Cherry from Blaney came into the pub and I didn't know him at all, but he came up to me. He says, are you John or Tommy? You know, and, I get that all the time. But then a nephew of his, Aidan Lynch, came in and uh, a daughter of Pat King's from the Hamlet. So there are four of us there, uh, five of us there in, in, in a group watching the game. And it was, it was uh, Aidan, the young fella. I had seen him a couple of weeks before in Super Valley and Blaney stacking shelves. And uh, I said, so where, where, what, what are you doing over here? Oh, he says, I'm, I'm working on hedge funds, he says. You know? And I said, just I says, do you miss Pete McMahon? He says, I do. He says, every night when I go to bed, I cry because there's no shelves to stack. <laughs> so tell me, get back to the game now. So tell me, how, how did you enjoy the game or what did you do looking at the game? Well, I, I was very fierce trepidation of the game because I was thinking beforehand of the Twin Towers, McFadden and Murphy, and what they would do to them on and full back line. You know, it really was scary. And uh, after a while, like, you just sort of say to yourself, uh, oh, they've gone in there and... and uh, Darren Cuse goes up, gets a point. Then Donny Gold starts a few attacks, and the full back lane starts coming out with the ball. The, the Vinnie Corey comes out, Kieran, Kieran Duffy, and then uh, Drew Wiley gets McFadden and he puts him across his knee and gives him a bit of a scalp. And, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, the, the fan Sherry says to me, he says, Jesus Christ, he says, if, 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 that, if Murphy and McFadden is uh, the Twin Towers, as they say, the full back lane is 9 11. So, uh, it went on like that all through, and then Gallagher made his sort of uh, kamikaze tackle, and he was like, I just thought, you know, he, he, he'd get a great job in the circus as a, as a human cannonball, the way he would it. <laughs> but, in fact, like, an awful lot was made of, of that tackle, like, tactically, from the Monaghan point of view, that it exposed the two McGees to Kieran Cuse and, and Conor McManus. But I don't think enough was made of it psychologically, because I think before that, the, the Donegal players were sort of beginning to wonder, should they go into the tackle in case the, the ball's taken off them, in case they lose the ball in the tackle. But after that, the, they were wondering, should they go for the ball at all in case they lost their lives? So, <laughs> so, so. so you obviously enjoyed it. Oh, I enjoyed it immensely. But at halftime, I just looked at the scoreboard and I said to myself, Jeez, that was a great half. I says, that's the best half I've seen since Monan played down last year in the championship, the first half. And then I thought, Jesus Christ, remember what happened that half, second, <laughs> second half. And my wife, my wife came into the pub and she says, what's the score? I says, it's five points to three. They're playing brilliant, I said, but it can't last. <laughs> So first up, again, we're going to protect our order. Show your appreciation for Sam Dunning, Owen Boyd, Pete Dunning, and Patrick Keenan.
After this comes Darren Hughes, Daisy Moan, Neil McAdam. <laughs> Would you please welcome onto the stage Vinnie Corey, Colin Walsh, and Drew Wiley? Colin Walsh is called Wendell. That's a different Wendell. Wendell's a different one. Have I had to see Wendy's made it tonight, anyway? Is that right? He loved me for that, won't he? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation for Next up, ladies and gentlemen, your management team Finn Barfus Patrick, a selector Leo McBride, selector Ryan Porter, team trainer
And finally, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome your team manager, Malachi O'Rourke, and the captain of the Monaghan Senior Football Team, Ulster Champions 2013, Owen Lennon. Molly, come on out here to get a quick word with you. Ladies and gentlemen, what about this? You heard your county chairman tell you what a great lad he was. We all know he's a great fellow, the one and only. Molly Gale Rourke. Come on, folks, Molly Gale Rourke. Now, you've been involved in Gaelic games all your life. You've been involved with clubs, counties as well. Some bunch of lads you have behind you there. There's no doubt. Uh, brilliant bunch of lads and... Uh, Probably the one thing I'd say is that regardless whether we would have won the Ulster title or not, I would have had the same time for them. And, that, and I think I think the Monon public would know that as well. The amount of effort the boys have put in over the years, their attitude, their discipline and everything else that they've put into Monon football. It was great that it was rewarded this year, but even if it, if it wouldn't have been rewarded, they still have, have represented the county so well over the years. And it was just brilliant that they did get the, the rewards they deserved in, in, in uh, July the 21st. Do you know, do you know, do you know the week in the, in the build up to that, did you think in your head, you know, you and your management team, did you say to yourselves, like, you know, we have the, I was just saying at the table there, I wasn't Donegal, I'm not taking about, just, you can't just uh, talk to a few people, but a few people in Donegal were saying, oh, no, we're not going to go down to that game, we're going to save ourselves for later in the season. And they sort of took the eye off the ball. And it's a dangerous thing to do when you play in Monaghan, isn't it? Well, that was that was proved, I suppose. But uh, the funny thing, you know, was was that all year and the last couple of years and right up to those the final, everyone said that Donegal were unbeatable and whether they played well or not, the machine that couldn't be beaten. And suddenly, when when the boys beat them in those the final, it was the soon became a very tired team and a team that had lost form and everyone had seen it coming and all the rest. So hey, it's hard to know, you know, just the boys were ready for them on the day, put in a great performance and thoroughly deserved the day. And we had no control over what Donegal were doing or, or anything about it. So uh, we just were glad to, to win it on the day. And, and, and all credit to, to the boys uh, for, for the work they put in. And also the everyone in the backroom team and, and the boys along me, Ryan and Leo and, and Finber, for the, for the brilliant work they put in. And, and it, just, it was a complete group effort and just delayed we got the rewards for it. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you as well, too, that from a media point of view, uh, just to reiterate what your chairman said, dealing with this man here is dealing with an absolute gentleman. He never refuses or causes grief to any of us in the media. He's just an absolute shining example of all those good and Gaelic games. Delighted listening he's here as the manager of the Ulster Senior Champions Malaga Award. Truly appreciation. And next up now, oh, here we are. You can get the trophy. Martin Magavani will present the trophy. Don't drop it now, Martin. Yeah. He can give it to one there, he's got big hands, he can, he, he can carry it in one hand, I'd say. And he can come up here and say, where do we come on up on? Ladies and gentlemen, your captain! Come on over here now. Well, earlier in the season we were at a chat show out in the club, and the uh, boys were asked who was going to win the Ulster title, and the... Uh, uh, various people give their opinions, and some people went for Barcelona, and a few others went for Tyrone, and various people went for Donegal. But you always said, you know, you, you were asked, I remember asking, you said, you know, like we met in that far away, look here, remember that? Remember you saying that to me? Yeah, I remember that. Um, you come up with your cards looking at <laughs> 10 pound of us uh, to predict who was going to win the Ulster Championship. But um, you didn't win that, to you? Oh, I well, I'm here looking at my money. But, uh, <laughs> I do remember, I did. I definitely did put down Monon, but I did, uh, I suppose, uh, roll it up in a ball and I put it, give it back to you. I suppose that was, I suppose, the way the team had it all year. We had that belief. We didn't really want anybody to know about it. We kept it, kept it nice and quiet. Um, I suppose in the build-up to the Ulster final, there was a lot of people maybe outside talking about our record against them. That, but we want to just play all that down. We say, oh, blow Donegal up. And thankfully on the day, we just, we just exploded and we beat them on the day like... Oh, on a personal level, like, you know, you've given so much to the game. I look at them. There, there's a whole host of lads here I could speak to because I know even, their, you know, a lot of them, their fathers before them, all that they gave for Monaghan football. How proud a moment was it for you to climb the steps after being, like, bridesmaid for so many times to have the trophy, us the champion? 
Yeah, that, that was exactly it. I suppose, um, I suppose the older members like myself and Dick and Tommy and Paul and Desi and a few of us, like we, 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 had, we had that inside that, you know, there was great teams that went by before, but we were all as compared to the 88 team. And that was there and it was within us. And we see it's like, you know, we really want to make our own history. And uh, thankfully on the 25th year, we did. Well, you certainly did an absolute credit. Ladies and gentlemen, another gentleman of the sport, Owen Lennon, from you. Hey, you are, you? You have a few more people to talk to. Thanks, Adrian. I'm just going to ask Dick Clark and, and Paul Finley just to come down here for a moment, just for a few words. If they can get out. <laughs> Dick and Paul, thanks for joining us. Owen just mentioned there, I suppose, being one of the senior members of the team, it's been a while coming trying to get this Ulster final. You've been an Ulster final before, haven't been successful. Dick, I'll start with you. What do you feel was the difference this year? Uh, like it's, it's, it's well recorded at this stage, like we've been about quite a while. You know, we had lost two Ulster finals in 07 and 2010. And I suppose when you look back at those years, a lot of people would have said from the outside looking in, we were probably short maybe two or three players in a panel good enough maybe to win an Ulster title. Maybe over the last two or three years, some of the younger lads from the minor teams have, have come through and matured, the likes of Colin and Connor, and really just added to what was there already. And you know, just built a panel that's there now and was capable to win an Ulster title. And, and, and thankfully, we were able to sort of find enough to stay on those few extra years when things definitely had got tough over the last few years to sort of hang in there and try and bring things on. And, and the lads definitely matured to, to sort of to lead that team. And, I think everyone just combined to, to develop a panel that was capable to win an Ulster Championship. What are your memories from the Ulster final? For me personally, you know, again, it was, it was just so nice to be on the field at the end. And, you know, it was all a bit of a blur now. You sort of looking at the videos, you see when the final whistle goes, you're hugging the first person that's in front of you. It was Kieran Hughes. And the next thing the crowd came coming on. And all I can remember was Owen Lennon's big brother assaulting me as he came on under the pitch. And I didn't know where to look at. And next thing you just it was just engulfed and and you were just mad to meet your family and your friends and and then spend those moments after the, after the after the presentation on the pitch with your teammates it was just a special evening and it's something you'll always remember paul can you remember the final whistle and and describe the feeling when that final whistle went yeah it was just pure emotion growing yeah um, you know we've worked like a stick has just alluded to there we've worked so hard for for that uh to know that medal and uh, to get it and for things to go so well and, and back in July there was just it was really special and I can remember just you know I don't know who the first person was I met but I remember one of my aunties coming on and she was one of the people that had jumped the fence or something to, to meet me first and it was just really really special and something that we'll always remember. Dick mentioned there about family and it's been a, a tough year for you Paul but with your father passing away it must have been quite a bittersweet moment in one way. Definitely, you know, it's just, you know, I think I mentioned to you earlier, you know, it's just strange the way things happened, you know, since dad passed away. I've, I've been able to capture a senior title with Bally Bay and then the Ulster title here at Monaghan. So it's just strange the way things happen. But uh, I know that he'd be absolutely thrilled, you know, the way things have turned out. And uh, he's a massive influence on my career and, and, you know, everything that has, you know, that I've been able to do in, in, in football. And it's sad that he's not here to enjoy it, but at the same time, I feel that he's, he's playing a special part in it. Well, we're all very proud of you. Congratulations, lads. Come on, that's Lord Jimmy. Finally, before I let the team, before I let the team go away, there's just two more people I want to speak to. We're all extremely proud of this man inside, but two lads in particular last weekend won an All-Star. So can I ask for Conor McManus and Colin Walsh to come out and speak to me just very quickly. Lads, you're, I suppose, more of the, the newer members. Congratulations, first of all, on your all-star. Did you expect it? What did you feel when your name was called out, Colin, first of all? Uh, when my name was called, uh, when I was called out, I probably didn't even, I didn't really think about the whole thing. I uh, just made sure I didn't trip walking up the steps. Uh, <laughs> knew I was live and telly, I didn't want to make a fool of myself. Uh, no, other than that, I was just a bit delighted, delighted to get the award. And but it's, it's kind of a kind of testament to how the team how the team played this year and how well we done. We might have only played four championship games, but we got two players on the on the All Star team of the year. So we've got to credit the 
credit to everyone on the team on how, how the year turned out. This has been a super year for both of you. I suppose maybe I'll just maybe speak a bit about the reaction to the fans, to the Farney Army. When you won the, won the final, did you expect it? What, what Can you give us a, a description of how you felt when you had all the fans after the match? Uh, after the game, I probably... Once, once Tommy kicked his point, I knew the game was over at that stage. Like, like when Tommy Freeman kicks a point, you don't really lose too many games. Uh, after the whistle, uh, the crowds, the crowds came around, and you were kind of it was, it was an awful outpour of emotion. Uh, luckily enough, Fintan Kelly came bursting onto the scene and and uh, threw me up on his shoulders and saved the day. So look at Fintan done, Fintan done his done his bit there and looked after me that day. So uh, I have to give him credit for that. Well done, Connor. Connor, as I said, a fantastic year for Mon and fantastic year for you personally with the county, with the country as well. What are your memories, though, from the Ulster final? Uh, I think I think uh, there was a bit of an interview after, just immediately after. And I think I, I might have said once or twice, I might have said magic. Um, that's just what it was. It was a magical day for Mon. Um, it, it's been a long time coming, 25 years in, in this county, like such a strong footballing county has been starved of, of that. And it's been a long time coming, you know, and that performance, I think, I think we just we just burst into life on the day of the final, and, and as I say, that performance and, and this county has been waiting too long for that. And I suppose the question we all want to know is, can we do back to back next year? <laughs> I think you should ask Malaga that one. Um, <laughs> no, look at uh, I suppose having having won one Ulster championship now, it just gives you more hunger for more, you know. And um, we'll get back down to work very shortly, and, and we'll we'll we we'll, we'll try anyway. Connor and Colin, thanks for chatting. Ladies and gentlemen, the 19 or the, this year's Ulster Championship team. Well, yeah, thanks very much indeed. We're just going to take a, a team photograph. You've been a, a marvellous audience. After this, we have got uh, five, six items to sell auction, which are obviously, if you could bear with us for another 20 minutes after that, we'll soon be dancing. We'll get the raffle after that, and we'll be dancing to the fabulous Conquerors. Very up name for a band tonight whenever you're here with all these lads. So ladies and gentlemen, collectively, would you put your hands together and show your appreciation for the Ulster Senior Football Champions 2013, Monaghan. Right, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do now, and don't we all run the way to the bathroom now? I have to get this auction done. Let's get this first item on the way. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's tonight. Wasn't it a marvellous night for Monaghan football as those lads go down to their seats? Unbelievable. Six nominees in the All-Stars and two All-Stars in Colin and uh, Unbelievable effort when you think about it. Boys and girls, I need your attention for 15 minutes, please. First up, where's Connor? Connor, come back up. Where are you? Connor, where, where'd you go? Is he coming back? Ladies and gentlemen, not only did he win an all-star, but he was also man of the match for Ireland against Australia in Croke Park. Show your appreciation, Conor McManus. Now, <laughs> hey, Conor, where, there you go. And ladies and gentlemen, this is his signed jersey from that particular night in Croke Park. And we're going to try an option it. Don't be shy. Get it up in there. There's money in the hall here, Conor. Okay, smile. Be a man model for two minutes. Somebody give me 20 feet. We're dealing in euros too, aren't we? Not sterling. Shh, please. A wee bit of attention. And I need a few spotters in the hall. It's such a big crowd. Very hard to see you all. Give me 25 euros immediately. I need 25. I have 25. I have 50. Give me 75. I have 100. 125. Do I have 150 euros in the hall? I have 150. Give me the house lights. I can't see people at the back. I have 150. 175 in the middle. Give me 200, this man's standing here, your male model, 200 euros I have. I need more than 200 euros for this fancy, 225 at least. Get your hands in the air, come on. This is a very special thing. I have 200 euros, this young lad here, this table here. Are you sweating? No, you're a good lad for a penny, 200 euros. Get your hands in the air for 225, come on. Folks, 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 one wee thing here. 
Folks, I'm a troll man trying to raise money for you here. I, you've been very good, but I can't talk over 600 of you. So please bear with me for 15 minutes to get a few quid. I have you at the back, kid. 250, it's yours at this stage. 250 euros. Anybody interested in letting him away with it at the back? He's at 250. It's Keep moving, Connor. Will you keep moving? 250. Shake a leg for Christ. I got all 200. Must be 200 euro in the hall. 250 is a 275. Somebody give me 275. I know you. I'm 275. Get your arms right in the air. This man here, you have it, sir. You wanted it. Were you picking your nose or were you bidding? Were you bidding? You weren't bidding. Were you just waving at me? Don't wave at me again. It'll cost you a fortune. 250 of that has it at the back. Is that another bid? 300. 300 euro at the back. Yes, good lad. You have it at the back, 300 euros. Is anybody else going to go more than 300 euros? 300 euros is going to go once. Get me the house lights up in the back. I can't see them. 300 euros once for Conor McManus, All-Star. All-Star champion 2013. Man of the match against Australia. 300 euros. 350. That's more like it. I didn't think I'm going to do more than that. 350. Keep moving. Shake that left leg. 350. 400 euro I have. That's more like it. Get them men with the money up the front, for God's sake. 400 euro. 400. <laughs> I, 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 I call your name out again wrong. 400 euros. 400. I'll need the name of that who got it or the lady who's bought it later on. 400 euros once. Anybody else? 400 euros. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't see it. 450. Thank you. you. You definitely bidden now. Young lad over the far side beside the bar. 450. 500. Shh. Could it the frenzy here, folks? They get a few quid here for Monaghan. 500 euro. We'll have it here in the middle of the hall. 500. If you're going to bid at the back, you need to put your hands or stand up for me because it's very difficult to see. I don't want you to miss the auction bid. 500 euro. You have it, sir. 500. <laughs> 500. You watch yourself now. 500. I'm letting it go. 500 once. Shh. 500. 550. 550. Thank you. If you should hurry up your wee minds a wee bit better, be quicker for Logie. I would be here all night. 600 on the far side. Thank you. 600. I've seen you, sir. I've got my eyes on you. Don't worry. 600. 600 on the far side. Thank you. Come on up here. Come on. Hook it on. Call you. There you go. There you go. Now parade around there, pretend you're important now. Okay. A signed Monaghan minor jersey, ladies and gentlemen, they can back. Right, Dick. Dick, come on up here and help me here. See, you got to steal with the ball. Now, next up. Shh. Two. Two All Ireland final football tickets for two. And just to let you know, we're going to do the final item now, but has it. Ladies and gentlemen, too, I want to say one way thing. It doesn't happen. Shh, one way thing. There's a hard working committee behind. Folks, shh, please. The fence, I guess, just don't happen out of the blue. There's a very hard working committee behind all this, spearheaded by Seamus here, who's in the background. Seamus McElwain, come on out here and take a round of applause. Come on out here, come on. Come on out here and take a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the man who, rang me, organized the whole thing like that. Worked very, very hard this fantastic evening. Now, we're doing the raffle, aren't we? We're going to do the raffle. Yeah, just quickly, just to let everybody know who, who won the prizes there from the gala auction. Brian Finnegan from Dunamine got the signed jersey of Conor McManus. Dick Clerkham won the football. PJ McArdle got the signed Monaghan minor jersey. Um, Paddy Connolly got the team picture. Um, Ross Mealiff then won the two All Ireland football final tickets for next year. And Jacinthan Angeland there got the signed Monaghan senior jersey. So if uh, all the people that, that um, bought these, bought these um, prizes, can they just contact maybe the committee here and come up at the end of the night? And actually, I've just been told if you can contact Marion Donnelly here sitting at table one, she'll be fit to sort you out. Okay, we're going to move on very quickly to the to the raffle. Adrian just mentioned any envelopes left. I think they're all in at this stage. Last chance, any envelopes to go into the box here? Any other envelopes? 
No. Okay, just to quickly let you know the prize. Third prize, Carrick Macross Lace. Second prize, a meal for two here in the Hillgrove Hotel. And first prize is a weekend for two in Crow Park Hotel and Crow Park Skyline Tour. So we'll start with the third uh, prize, Adrian. Ladies and, gentlemen, shh, ladies and gentlemen, Cronia's here working very, very hard for you. Please just cool it for two minutes to we get it finished. And as she said quite rightly, if anybody wants to go and pay Marion up in the bridal suite later on for any of the auction items that got, that'd be okay, Marion, no problem. That'd be all right, darling, okay, fair enough. I'll be up in 20 minutes, girl, all right, fair plenty. Right, what's the first prize again? First prize is, well, we'll start with the third prize first of all. For the, no, the first prize has to be the okay. first one. Weekend for two in the Crow Park Hotel and Crow Park Skyland Tour. The winner of the first prize. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Second prize. Second prize is a meal for two in the Hillgrove Hotel. A meal for two in the fabulous Hillgrove. What a beautiful meal we had here tonight. Wasn't it fantastic? Show sure, appreciation. Go to table. Table number 43. Jackie. Jackie Crow. Jackie, you get a meal for two here in the Hill Road. For a second, no, you can stay your ground. We'll get it down here, Jackie. All right, don't worry. We're here all night. No bother. That's the second prize. And third prize over. then for the Carrick Macross Lace. Yeah. And what's the third one? Carrick Macross Lace. Carrick Macross. Here we go. We'll dig deep. The winner goes to table number seven. Finmore Fitzpatrick. Finmore, you win the third prize. There you go. What's that? That's right. Carrick McCross Lace. Uh, it'll look cute on your kid. Anyway, what's the first prize again? First prize is a weekend for two in the Crow Park Hotel and a Crow Park Skyline Tour. Woo! Lovely. Goes to table number 47. Where's table 47? Away at the very back. Well, somebody's going to Croke Park, and their name is Brendan Laverty. Brendan, you're going to Croke Park. Out of the raffle. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I really enjoyed it tonight. You've been a wonderful audience. As a Tyrone man, I wish you all the very, very best. Monaghan have always been very, very good to me, and I appreciate it. I want to say one wee thing to you. We were fortunate, we were fortunate to win a few All Irelands in recent years with a lot of luck. And I want to say one wee thing to you. The Tyrone people, the Tyrone players, the Tyrone management always remember the welcome they get every year they cross into Monaghan whenever they've won the All Ireland. And it's something that the Tyrone people and the players and everybody involved in Tyrone really, really appreciate. You're real Gaelic people. I want to thank you on behalf of them. Thank you very, very much indeed, and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give a big round of applause to Adrian Logan for his hard work tonight. Well done, Adrian. Just a few quick things before I, I let you go, just to let you know that on sale tonight, you can go to talk to Mark Kellett or Gabriel Riley about this, Monaghan's Day of Glory. It's a special edition, a two-disc DVD with full coverage of the minor and also senior final matches and lots of extra. There are only 100 DVDs made and they're on sale tonight. So they're not available in any shops or anything. So if you're interested, they're 20 euro. Go find Mark Kelly. He's around here up at the stage or Gabriel Riley and talk to them about that. Okay, Shinny Jarrett, Nahiha Forman from Mark Shin. While I'm weeks ago, La Ahan Benahan has been shown up. On behalf of Kushta Kundam Winahan, I'd just like to thank everybody that came out this evening to all the players, the 1988 Ulster title winners, this year's minor and senior Ulster champions. Thank you so much for coming out and being part of this tonight. A big thank you once more to our sponsors, Investec, for their support throughout the year and tonight as well, Boromayagi. We, a big thank you again to Andrea Logan for being a fantastic host this evening. The Hillgrove staff, as Adrian mentioned, for their, for their wonderful meal and service tonight. As I said, the night's only starting. There's going to be music down the back. Lorraine, I think, is down there, ready to go with the conquerors. Buenigi Salt Asaniha. Thanks once more to Murphy's videos as well for the great coverage they gave us too. Buenigi Salt Asaniha. Enjoy the night. Safe home. Boromayagi.